first of all you're going to want to print out your pattern so here it is and then you want to get freezer paper now you can if you want just draw your own but we've got a pattern so we might as well go through the techniques that we're going to use in other projects so on freezer paper if you haven't seen freezer paper before it's matte on one side shiny on the other I don't know if you can see that the shiny side is going to melt when we put it on with, when we use the iron so you want to make sure that it, you're drawing on this side so matte side is for drawing okay so we're going to trace your pattern now I put numbers on so if they've got the same number they're the same heart roughly so we only need we need two ones one two two threes four fours and one five now five is very small so if you find that too hard to sew then we can always just sew it um, without fabric on but might as well give it a go to start off with so trace those out and you want 10 fabrics Okay. So in the pack I put 12, so pick your favourites. So I've, I've picked these ones. So I think on the packs I did either reds and oranges or pinks and purples with a couple of you know neutrals and creams thrown in. But you're welcome to pick your own fabrics. Now take your scissors and my you're all gonna you're all gonna cry here because what I do is I'm in the I use my fabric scissors, I'm terrible. There's so many there's so many things up all the time saying don't cut paper with scissors, but you know, I don't really, I, I don't care. I have, I have three of these scissors and I never particularly find, I cut, I cut these, I cut freezer paper with it all the time and I never notice any problems. So, so let's do the big one first, but if you want to, then find your paper scissors or some scissors that aren't your prize and joy and cut out the shape first and then iron it on. I like to iron it on and then cut out because I get a very, I can much sharper edge than I would otherwise. So pick whichever one is, we go for the big heart, so pop it on, on your iron and give it a little press. Um, I have my iron set on normal cotton steam, um, nothing fancy. You don't want it too hot because otherwise it kind of shrivels it up a little bit but then we're just going to cut around the outside like that. I find when we're doing some more complex shapes that it's, it's easier to cut through the paper and fabric than it is to cut through fabric next to the paper. Okay so we're going to continue. You can, so here we want, this is heart number one on my pattern, you can put two fabrics down, give it a good press so they're stuck together and then if you pick them up carefully you can cut both out at once and I find that you can go up to four fairly easily so it shows that it can't really blunt my scissors that much because I wouldn't be able to cut four layers of fabric otherwise um, so number three next now you can, I'm just picking these pretty much randomly but you can have a look against the layout and see which ones you'd prefer to go next to each other but I'm not going to worry about that okay. I've got, um, I have actually got a pot to the side that you can't see here that I'm throwing my scraps into I'm not just throwing them on the floor or anything I'm mean, going to be a bit wasteful here but not normally If you want, what you can do, obviously there's plenty of room in these samples here that you could cut out lots of hearts. Now, this is a little, I'm cutting out four at once and you do have to be quite careful. So you kind of just pinch, I mean, feel free to cut them out singly if you want, but just pinch very closely. There you go. And then you've got four at once. Ha -ha. So yes, you could cut out more, more hearts. And on the other piece of fabric, I put in, in the packs, I put in two pieces of stabilizers and two backing fabrics. So it, if you want to use the other set of stabilizer and backing fabric, then you can. Right, next, I've actually done one heart on here already because I was having a go at videoing. But you've got your backing fabric and your stabilizer. Now, 
don't do do as I say and not as I do. Make sure your stabilizer is plenty big enough. For in the packs, I should have made sure that they were all the same size. I've just picked up a little bit here, and I'm going to be in danger of sewing over the edge of the stabilizer now. But so stick it behind it, and then find your pattern again. I've just got mine here. I'm just going to peel off this paper now. Oh, and I've cut out one I don't need, but well, we'll pretend it's not there. So pop him on there. Mine, my heart seems to be slightly different, so let's have a look. Next one is number threes. So basically we're going to lay these out into the shape of another heart. And there will be some gaps in between. So we could lay these all out and just check that we're happy with where they are, and colours and stuff. Mm -hmm. so that's another number one. Let's do that there. And any gaps we're going to fill in by just doing a little bit of embroidery. So these are all my fours. There. Oh, that's quite pretty. So I'll put that red one in the middle. There. And that one down there. Just rearranging. And I've got my teeny weeny little heart. It is helpful to have longer nails to be able to get this freeze paper off. And you want to be careful as you take it off because it's possible you don't really want to be fraying your edges before we start okay so they're laid okay and I'm happy with the layout but I could change them around a little bit at this point if I wanted to right over to the machine now so you can see I've got my free motion foot on so they all they're all different I don't know, can't see that now so this is mine I have a faff Performance 2056 and they've either, they've either got some kind of spring or this one is more of a, this is a, a cam action one so basically basically this, this acts as the spring here, this bit of plastic so you have to work out how yours goes on so mine goes through the through the foot here so you have to take off the other foot mine fastens here, you can see mine, mine's rather fluffy there we go. So just make sure, if it's something like this, make sure that your foot is low enough so that this bar here can come and it sits over the top if yours is like mine. Right. The other thing we need to do is put your feed dogs down. So that's with them up, that's them down. I have a little button here on what's well, just out of camera shot, but it's it's on the on the front of the machine. And also sometimes mine's also got one. Again, could it be fluffy? <laughs> But um, there's one here which you can, so they're in different places for different machines, you have to look that up. Right, and then on some machines, like mine, mine actually has a setting for free motion, so mine's got a, it's, it's got a digital display just out of shot here, so on mine there's a free motion button that I press. Another thing, if your machine has it, is it's very nice when you're sewing to be able to stop with the needle down, so obviously you can do that with good foot control. Or if you've got one, there's often a, there can be a setting on your machine which mine has. So I just set mine to low, so it just puts the needle in, so not all the way down, but just a little bit, just so it catches where I am, and then I can stop without worrying about what I'm doing. Right. So thread. You can see this is the thread that I use for my outlining. So it's um, Moon's Coats. Um, let's have a look. Colour 242, but it's a, a kind of mid brown. And I use that for pretty much all of my outlining, unless sometimes if you're outlining quite a dark brown, I find I, I'd go a shade darker. Um, this one. So it's still. You can see it's still not black. Black is it's very harsh. It really does show. And you know, if you've got any wobbles or anything, it really does show up with black. Um, so I, I tend to stick clear of black. I do have a, a reel somewhere, but I, I don't really use it. Okay, other threads we're going to be using. Um, I really like. I like variegated threads. I have, I have lots and lots and lots of variegated threads. So, um, and they're all they're all different types. Although these ones are actually. I'm probably going to be using, I'll decide as I go along, but there's this very nice, um, this is a, a sulky Gutemann one, um, another one 
in oranges um, and then a light one the the background is 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 um Kona cobblestone I think this one so it's quite a nice mid well, I should show you it so rambling away there you go so this background here is quite a nice mid tan so it will show up a light thread nicely as well as a darker thread so I'll probably use this one as well which is a superior thread king toot quilting thread um, which was quite a thick one I, I use them for hand quilting as well so you do have to watch out with your tension on those ones on your machine right what else do we need make sure you've got scissors to hand which I always forget so scissors there we go I, I just use embroidery scissors nothing fancy Right, let's see if I can get in around the machine with this camera. I've got this tripod between my legs here, so we'll just see how it goes. Okay, so I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. So I've already done the one in the centre here, so let's start off with one of the other big ones. So I find it easier to start in the, start in the very base of the heart's a good place to go, really. Oh. There we go, right. Okay, I'm going to try and keep this hand out of the way as best I can. So, put your top thread out of the way. And if you can, where possible, keep a finger on your fabric. As long as you, as long as you keep your finger flat so that it's on the fabric and it isn't like waving around here, you're very unlikely to be able to sew over your, over your foot because you've got your finger, because you've got this plastic guard here. That's, that's going to be... Oh, something else I should point out here. If your if you have a, if your foot is like this, it screws on and it is it's like a grub screw really, and so it's metal on metal and you can't really tighten it very well. And because your machine is vibrating, it comes loose. So do watch out that your needle should be in the centre of the foot. If you notice that that needle is, is the foot is starting going this way, at some point it's going to fall off and scare the life out of you. And generally what happens is you break your needle when it hits the foot. And you can see on mine, my, my foot here is covered in scratches where it's fallen off and I've hit the needle. So keep an eye on your foot. They fall off all the time, these, these free motion feet. So just be wary. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a couple of stitches just to secure it to start off with. Okay. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear me talking while the machine's going, so I'll I'll keep pausing to talk to you okay so we're stitching very close to the edge it's about a millimeter so as soon as you can and it's secure cut that end off because otherwise what happens is you sew over it and it, it, it just you wouldn't believe it just gets caught back and forth and makes a big mess and it's very difficult to get off of it later so we're going to go from that V of the heart and we're going to stitch nice and smoothly all the way to the bottom okay okay now when you get to the bottom you can either turn turn it round which you might want to lift the foot up it doesn't make a huge amount of difference when you lift the foot up with a free motion wand but it does it lifts a little bit so you can you can turn it if you want to do that let's turn it today so we're going to be very carefully turning it round, put our foot back down again. Okay, I'm going to go off again. Now you can hear from the machine that I'm not going that fast, but you can go faster. So when you get to the, um, let's twirl this round again. Y your other hearts may fall off a little bit here, but I, I still tend to put them on and, and just make sure you don't, you know, lose them so when we get round to where we started we're going to carry on going if you missed anywhere or you're a bit wonky or anything like that then this is your your second chance to catch it down I usually go around two times unless I know it's going to be put to quite a lot of wear so a lot of the work I do is just to hang on the wall so two times is fine if I know it's going to have to go through the wash then I tend to go around three times which does make it look a bit heavier but better than it fraying so um, don't worry about sewing exactly on top of the line that you've just sewn because really the second if you're slightly further away from it then that actually helps the fraying a little bit because it's holding it down in a different place so we're going to whiz down right down to the bottom and back up again okay we're going to 
working onto a stop a couple little stitches move it very slightly just if you were if I don't know if your machine has an automatic tie off but basically you're just trying to replicate that okay and then we're going to move over to the next heart so I'm going to do this little piddly one so I don't bother cutting the thread off here because it's as easy to um, leave it because it's going to be nice and taut so with the foot up just move it across a little bit I tend to hand crank the needle down okay make sure your foot's down off we go again right this one's very small I might get my fingers in the way a bit on this one I'm not going to bother trying to turn it because it's, it's very small so we're just going to go back up again That's the middle, off we go again. There we go, teeny heart done. Okay, so we're going to move over to this orange one here. So that's heart number three. Okay, I'm just pulling it down gently. And you notice I'm not bothering cutting off the ends because it's nice and taut, so we don't need to. In terms of, of stitch length, if you're stitching slower and moving fast, then you're going to get more wobbly looking stitching. It's going to look more jaggedy. Whereas I'll, I'll go nice and fast for you here. So what? Okay, so that was like a bit more speedy. Um, now you do find that you tend to get a slightly thicker more pronounced line if you go faster um, but it has held it all down very nicely so it kind of gives a different look when I'm doing things like whiskers I tend to go for as as big a stitch as I can so I, I try and sew very slowly and move quite fast and I think it gives more of a, a hand sewn look if you want something to be really held down or it's quite detailed then you know move slowly get your foot pressed down so and then it will hold it better so especially areas that might fray a little bit so corners and things like that's a good idea you know really really sew that down so then we're going to move on to one of the heart number fours So on that one, I don't know if you can see here, I have some pieces. Now here I I missed. So I went slightly too high and I missed over here. And what I didn't do is I didn't just go back straight off and try and go over it and make it better. Because the problem is, is if you go back, you've added an extra layer, an extra row of stitches and somehow it really does stand out when you do that. So if you if you should have two lines and you go back and fours you've just added in so instead of having two you've now got four lines around an area you made a mistake and so it, it's just like putting little hours go look at me i made a mistake so don't go back you're going to have another go so as it comes around the second time i just went in a bit further and made sure i got it down okay um and you can see i'm not i'm not worrying about sewing on top of it you know if i wanted it to be to look so that it didn't have a bit of a you know scruffy look to it i'd only do one line of stitches it, it really it doesn't matter it's just the style so, which is good because it makes it easier as well <laughs> right so we're going to go down to number another number four so this is our bottom one so try and make sure it's fairly lined up so it's going to be in the middle we don't want to your heart wandering off a bit so another go something I've not really mentioned here is tension so pre-motion embroidery it really shows up variations in tension that you just you wouldn't notice when you were just sewing you know quilting or dressmaking but you, you can really spot things in tension so I can see here now my tension should I, I've, I've set it on in my normal setting but I can see that these stitches here they're just a little bit looser than I would really like 
and so they, they just start getting a bit of a it's not loose enough to like come apart but it, it's a little bit more bumpy than I like so I'm just gonna turn my tension wheel up a little bit so I was on four which I, I don't actually know what this is I, I normally sew at four so I guess that four must be about right so I'm just going to turn it up to four and a half and I'll keep an eye on it if I start noticing it's a bit too tight I'll turn it back down again and I find it's it can be loads of different things it's really sensitive to it so if you find your top um, reel of thread if that's starting to get you know when I change over from a fat one to a thin one you can tell the difference if you're bottom bobbing you can actually tell the difference on that of how uh, your tension will respond to how full the bottom bobbin is. So I often find that you can tell that um, before the warning light comes on, which is a little bit, because my machine's so fluffy, it's a little bit unpredictable whether it tells me whether the bobbin's low or not. But I can usually tell because the tension starts changing. So if the, for me, if the bobbin, bottom bobbin tension is getting higher, so, the, so as if the bottom bobbin's getting empty, then you have to start matching the top tension to match your bottom tension. So if that increases, you need to increase the top. So it probably means that my thread's going to run out soon. Which is a pain, so to make sure you start off with a full bobbin at the bottom, not unlike me. Okay, so we're going to do... We've got how many more we've got to do? So we've done... One, two, three, four, five, so we've done six, right, so four more to go, okay? You don't have to start at the bottom. If you don't want the, you know, that bottom, that V, we can start anywhere on it, really. It's, so I'm going to start here. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you can tell here, but but that that tension's much better. So it's just just a little loose, and it's it's much better. So I'm happy with that. So yeah, is you do really have to fiddle with it. It's not a kind of work out what your tension is for free motion, and then it's always going to be the same. You are going to have to fiddle with it. So I mean, I put mine. I don't actually know what it goes up to, but I think it goes up to nine. I think it's full. And I generally for free motion, I change between about five and one. So, you know, in within a project, so you do really have to keep changing. So next hop. Oh, you know, just, you know, I said about my stabilizer being a bit short, it's, it's, Oh, it's within a millimeter. So definitely don't do that because it it it's, it doesn't help. You don't need to make life more difficult for yourself. Okay, so we'll go up to heart number another four. So if we go again. I just noticed with that one that normally I think I, I tend to go round in a clockwise direction but for some reason I've gone round in an anti-clockwise direction. You may find that you're better going one way than the other when you're going around so I found that a little bit more awkward so presumably I normally go round clockwise and not anti-clockwise. Okay anyway so that's all our heart sewn down so we're just going to draw that thread out, snip it, let me put this so you can see it so I'm not going to worry about the back okay we're just concerned about the front, so we're going to trim down all those ends. It's helpful to have a thread pop by you, which I've left mine by my ironing board, never mind. Otherwise, it does tend to make a little bit of a mess. Okay, so I'm just snipping these nice and close. I don't tend to do this on the back because once you start cutting both ends short then you might find things start fraying a little bit more. 
Okay, so we've done that. Let's put that to one side. So what we need to do now is pick out... I'm going to change my thread colour now. So I'm going to pick something nice and bright. So we're going to go for this orange here. Now this is a different thread than I've been using. Let's see if I could manage to thread my machine with the camera in the way. So I'm going to be changing the tension. Now on the bottom bobbin, I'm very lazy and I, I just I can't be bothered to change it every two seconds. And I also don't want to have to have, you know. Um, okay, so. Here we go. Now, the eagle eye folks amongst you might notice that this isn't, in fact, the same embroidery I had mere seconds ago because I made a slight miscalculation with how to use my camera for videos and all the last bit I did didn't, in fact, actually record. So, I've just whizzed up another one just to prove I didn't make a big mess of it. This, this is the one that I just did whilst the camera wasn't switched on. But we'll have another go. So, what was I? I've got to remember now of what I said. So, I think I was talking about your bottom bobbin thread. So, I'm lazy and I don't bother changing it very often unless I really bothered about it. I just tend to um, set the tension. A little bit lower. So here I'm actually using a quilting thread. So is this all positioned okay? I think we're right. Okay. So put that one out of the way, got my pattern, got scissors. So basically we are going to fill in some of the areas to make it look a bit more hearty with a little bit of stitching and it'll give us a bit of practice on doing things. So we're gonna either do spirals or little hearts. So the smaller it is, the neat the the faster you need to sew or slower you need to move because you want those stitches to be nice and close so it's a combination if you get the machine going faster and move the same speed your stitches are going to be closer um, alternatively you can just not move very fast and that'll do the same job okay so we're going to do a big swirl here so we're going to start from the outside and I'm going to go anti-clockwise into the center okay Tension's a little bit low, so I'll just tweak that up a little bit. On the tension, you just look in. If you can see those stitches looping a little bit, and just turn it up a little. I'm using a variegated cream one here. But feel free to use whatever you want. I'm trying to manoeuvre your machine so that it'll give a bit more spread out. I'm going to do a heart next. To be honest here, I probably would have been better changing my bottom bobbin thread. I didn't really have either a white one or a dark brown one threaded up, but... As you can slightly see the thread coming up occasionally, which doesn't look as neat as it could do, but in mind. You do it better. You don't, you don't listen to me on that. Do another couple of these, and I'm going to change to a darker thread. I think <laughs> it doesn't. This is as neat as my first one, but never mind. So basically, just enjoy yourself here. This is just you've got a little bit of play in, just filling in. You can do whatever shapes you want. I've done spirals and hearts, but sorry, I'm just cutting my threads off here. You can't do it. You can see me doing it. Um, but you could do anything swirls, stars. Yeah. Um, right, different colour thread. Different threads. You definitely need different tensions on it. This one's that King Toot one, which does really need a very loose tension. You probably would benefit from changing for that one to a bigger needle. 
website, but if you use bigger needles, it, it, it's got to punch a hole through, and it does make a difference if you're sewing near the edge. So I'm just threading this up. Um, if you sew near the edge piece of fabric and you use a big hefty needle, it's going to make the, the edges go and get more damage than it would. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get the back of my hand while I'm just threading my needle. Yeah, so I'll just turn the tension up a little bit for that one from having done the other one. So let's do another little swirl here. You can see I forgot to cut the end of my thread there and I've sewn over it so I'll have to ferret that out in a minute. I'm going to do a heart. So if you're colouring in an area, take your time, okay? So you see a lot of people when they do it, they do a kind of a back stitch, so you go back forth, back forth, back forth. And I find that just it it has a tendency to kind of concertina all your fabric and pull it in a bit. So I tend to you can you hopefully could see then that I um I do like a line and then back and forth to the line and then I find it pulls it in less and you get less tension issues. I think probably where people do it, where they go the back and forth more and it doesn't do that, is because they've actually got it in a hoop. But I don't like hoops. And they're also often quite expensive to get a, a big hoop. Okay, a couple more around here. in heart. I'm going to do a couple in this little bit here so as well. Tiny heart. As well down here. Think that will do okay so i think so just have a plate don't worry too much about it it's just practicing techniques and you are with all this you're kind of creating an impression and it's the overall piece that you're looking at so don't fret if one heart is a bit wobbly or something goes a bit wonky no one is going to notice you're going to see overall a pretty little picture of hearts with nice colour threads and, and fabrics. Okay, so there we are. Oh, there's one last thread. So we're going to go over and give this a nice press now and trim it, start trimming it down. Okay, so here it is trimmed. This is the, the first of the two that I've done. So I've trimmed it down to seven and a half by five and a half inches. I have no idea why I picked that size, but I did it once and then I then did all the rest of them to match, so I'm stuck with it now. So I've left my stabiliser on the back. Now if I was putting this in a quilt or a wall hanging, I would use oh we can see I've just gone over the edge on that one. Um, I'd use a different type of stabiliser. Let me see if I can find a piece. So this one here is a very it's a papery one that use it for you know machine embroidery where people do them on the you know computerised machines. So it's it's just a cheap one. I've got an enormous roll of it, but it's really papery, so you can just shred it. Now, it does tend to come apart a little bit as you're sewing because basically you're perforating each time you sew so it doesn't hold up as well whereas this one, and this is the one I put in the kits um, this is a very tough one and it really is, it's a dream to sew on in comparison to that one so if I know I'm going to be putting it in a quilt and I don't want to have this extra thickness in here I don't think it'd matter if you were doing um, you know, free motion quilting or machine quilting but if you're, hands, if you're hand quilting it's quite a thick layer to get through and it does, it does interfere a little bit 
so on one on quilts I've done where I've used it I've just cut as much I mean you could you could cut along this outside shape but um, but for this it actually just gives a little bit of stiffening so here's my felt and I've cut that to five and three quarters of an inch and seven by seven and three quarters of an inch which should just give you a very narrow edge so position it so you've got a little bit all round and then basically we're just going to stitch all the way around the outside okay which I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to film but um, I just I don't actually bother changing my foot my foot and I just leave the free motion foot on and I just stitch around the edge which gives it a bit of a scruffy look but you know that's that's what I'm going for but you could you could put your machine foot on and do a very you know controlled nice straight edge um, the other thing you can do is don't trim this felt back just position it on it and trim it on after you've done it sometimes I do it that way if I especially if you and if you want to put a hanger on the back now is the time so before you've you, before you've done this just cut a little bit of fabric and put your put your hanger on the back then stitch it on otherwise you're gonna have to because you can do then means that you can do it by the um, you can do it by machine then as opposed to having to at this point if you forget and you've got to, you're gonna have to hand stitch it on I mean it's not terrible to hand stitch something onto felt but there we go. Okay, right. Good luck.